internet that says it's amazing. You got one side of the internet saying it's the worst thing ever, and then you have some people in the middle saying it's okay. You know what? MCU at the moment is... I don't know what to say. I don't know what to think about it. I am a massive Marvel fan. I'm the first to admit that I loved MCU. I was an original stan for Marvel, okay? I remember watching Iron Man back in the day and going, this is the this is the thing, okay? I like this. Iron Man, relatable character, you know, he's a, you know, okay person who realizes that his entire life has been in servitude of evil, so he decides, all right, I'm going to turn it around and do the right thing. And then you got all these other heroes that introduce. But as we've gotten further and further into the MCU, there's something that I've noticed. What is it with Marvel and making its female characters very unlikable and I only mean very unlikable it's in, unlikable in the sense that they complain a lot okay and when I mean complain they complain mostly about the situations they're put in they complain mostly about how the world has been harsh on them whereas you look at the male characters in the MCU they rarely complain okay like the Hulk I don't think I've ever seen his character complain once about the fact that he's been chased around, you know, the planet for 15 years, okay? But, you know, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, She-Hulk, <laughs> Attorney at Law, Season 1, 88% on Rotten Tomatoes, 75% user score, and if you go over to IMBD, which is a harbour of critical reception, well, 5.2%. However, I mean, this always is what happens on IMBD. You get a lot of people give it 10, a lot of people give it 1, a few give it in between ratings. Interestingly enough, it's a 7.2 amongst males, at least I think. The reason why I'm not sure, I mean females, not males. The reason I'm not sure is because if you look at this, right, 46,000 users have given it five, like 5.2. 16,000, it says here, 16,000 males. Now, does that include... So, I'm assuming this thing, this is what makes up that demographic, right? Where are the other 30,000 <laughs> reviews? Like, are they females that are giving, like, the same rating? Because, like, that, there's no way that 2,000, like, uh, women giving it... Uh, 7.2 is going to statistically occur it to be 5.2. So, I don't know who's given the other 30,000 reviews. No gender, I guess. Uh, but as you can see, females like it a bit better. I mean, under 18s, there's only 23. They don't like it. The demographic that likes it the most, surprisingly, is the 18 to 29 demographic. Fantastic. Uh, and, of course, 30s to 44s, which is what I think the show is targeting, and I'll get to that in a bit. So, as you can see, males aren't a huge fan of this new Marvel show, especially the 30 to 44. Now, I fall into this bracket. If I was to rate it off one episode, I haven't watched the second episode. If I was going to rate it off one episode, I'd give it about uh, 4, 5 out of 10. It's mediocre. Like, I don't think I actually laughed at any of the jokes jokes because She-Hulk is a comedy and that's what the directors said so I'm going to go off what they said it's a comedy I don't really laugh it's not that funny okay maybe it's just the humor doesn't appeal to me specifically but nothing in the show really made me laugh okay I mean a lot of the dialogue is just cringe inducing at least that's how I felt like I honestly felt a bit of cringe listening to some of the dialogue and I'll get to some of the dialogue in question in a minute. But it wasn't really that funny. Okay? So you got a talented actress. To, I can't pronounce. Messalani. That's how I'm going to refer to her. Messalani playing. She's a really talented actor. Playing She-Hulk. You have a sorted cast of supporting actors. Including my favourite which is. Uh, I think it's G Ginger Gon Gonzaga. Gon Gonzaga, I pronounce that correctly, playing her paralegal who, I mean, <laughs> they make a big point in the opening five minutes of the episode of making the male lawyer, he bad because he's telling her 
that he should do it. You sure I shouldn't do it? This is what he says. You know, I think it would sound better if it came from me. Okay. Ironically, in the second episode, she gets fired. Again, getting ahead of myself. I haven't watched the episode. I just read that's. I heard that's what happens. So maybe he should have. She should have let him do it. So he gets fired. But I digress. Uh, and then she's just like, she essentially just pumps her up, her paralegal. So that I mean, they're they're thumbs upping each other. You know, it's fantastic. And then she breaks the fourth wall and tells us how her origin story occurred. We get an amazing Captain America is a virgin joke, like. He's a virgin. Wow. Who cares? I don't think a single soul in the MCU cares that he's a virgin. You know what? Because we're too focused on the fact that he was willing to do whatever it took to defend people. He's a superhero. He's got a high purpose in life. I mean, he does not care about whether he's... Like, he cares about Peggy. That's the only person he cares about. And, you know, Peggy's like, what, 90 years old when he comes... When he, uh... When he wakes up from the freeze. And then he goes back and lives with her and has a fulfilling life. So everyone's a winner. So, But anyway, I digress again. So she gets her powers through a car accident. Stuff happens. Then she goes, she gets upset at some three guys who try and pick her up at the bar. Which she gets upset at. It's like, it's a bar. These three guys try and talk to you. That happens. But it makes a big point. Because, you know, all the guys in the show, in, in this episode, okay come off as either annoying or stereotypically one note. And I mean that sincerely. The male le- lawyer, complete ass. That's his character is just being an ass. That's it. The three guys at the bar who try to pick her up. They don't actually say anything rude or callous. You know, they're like, uh, do they, are you with anyone? At least that's what I remember. Maybe I'm wrong. Correct me in the comments below. But again, it's like, she did want to be left alone. I didn't leave her alone, which some guys they just don't get a hint. That's that's a thing in society. You know, some guys just don't get the message. And then she gets angry. Then Hulk neuters her and then trains her for the next 20 minutes of the episode. Then we cut back to the end of episode where she uses her She-Hulk powers once. And then that's the end of the episode. So, problems with She-Hulk. You know what? It's a subvertive masterpiece. You want to know why? Because I never knew that a show would actually have the guts to compare this following set of circumstances to each other and make one of them seem better than the other. Okay, you ready? So there's a scene in the show where essentially Hulk is... Professor Hulk now is trying to teach... She Hulk to meditate to relax because obviously you get angry too much, it's bad. It's you know, it could be the end of the world. So he's like telling her, You gotta relax, you know, this you know, this is your life now, you can't reverse this. You are always gonna be She Hulk, which is correct. You know, she's always gonna be She Hulk. But you know, she goes on this little tangent about how she's better at controlling ang- her anger and you know, she's had a harder life essentially because she's been catcalled and mansplained and that she could be murdered for it if she doesn't control her anger. So, she is comparing that, okay, not implicitly, but by saying that, she is comparing that experience to the following. Deep breath. The Hulk can't, like, can't love anyone. And when I mean can't love anyone... Like, the person he loves, Betty, in an Incredible Hulk, can't do any, like, sexual relations with her because if he gets too excited, he turns into Hulk and he could kill her. One. Two, he gives her up because he wants her to be safe. So he leaves her, like, he leaves her to protect her. So he's given up love. Two. Three, he's on the run from the government for how many years... You know, who want to kill him and essentially use him so they can, you know, experiment on him to make more super soldiers. So he's on the run, so he doesn't have a permanent home. You know, he's been hunted down by government agents, so he's constantly on edge. You know, the you know stress, the paranoia, and, you know, you know, I don't know, stress that would come with that. I don't know, this is not stressful to run away from the government for 15 years. What do I know? Uh, 
the writers of this show obviously know better. Uh, what else? He saved the world countless amount of times, suffering pain, injury, and loss. Black Widow, who he loved deep, you know, and cared for, died sacrificing life in Endgame. He almost killed himself in Endgame, bringing everyone back, you know, by doing the snap. But no, none of that is comparable to being catcalled and mansplained. Now, in the real world, okay, the real world, we'll get back to the real world here. Yeah, you could say those are not nice things. You know, no one wants to be mansplained on. And I do it occasionally, you know, I just start explaining things. Not because I'm, not because I'm an ass. At least I don't think it's because I'm ass. You know, I just like to explain things. But it comes off like that. And I get that. Sure. Okay, that's an issue. Cat calling. If your worst issue in life is cat calling versus all those other things I just mentioned previously, yeah, that's where the issue comes in. The disconnect from the show's reality versus real life. In real life, sure, all these issues are pertinent to a woman. Okay, I don't know what it's like to be cat called, and I'm sure it's you know not nice. Okay, no one wants to be cat called. Especially just want to be left alone. But you're comparing all that to being on the... Just one. You could take one example. Being on the run from the government for 15 years. Yeah, you lost me, show. You lost me. Also, the projecting thing. I like how she says he's projecting onto her. And then as she's saying all that, she gets angry. And then somehow immediately just goes back into her shell. For no... With no explanation, the show doesn't explain it, how she's able to control her anger very well. Uh, he hulks, it's like, well, this is uncharted territory. And then she's like, I don't remember what she said, but she says something like, I'm done here. And I have a fight. Like, again, Hulk, she Hulk. You know, I don't know how, I don't know what to, I don't know what to feel about this show. That, I mean, that one, that one line of, dialogue summarizes the show for me it's written by women for women that's fine things can appeal to not me but i thought the whole point of the mcu was to appeal to a larger audience kids parents adults male and female alike okay now you could say that there weren't a lot of female characters previously in the mcu black widow okay was in the mcu previously very well written character both smart Okay, can stand on her own, stands up to her male counterparts, strong female woman. She does it without denigrating them. And that's a, a broader issue, is that in order to make She-Hulk look better, she constantly is denigrating on Bruce Banner. You know, and that's the point I was saying originally at the start of this, this video. She's not likable. She-Hulk is not likable. Okay? She spends over half her time complaining about life, which I guess life is terrible. She's a lawyer. She's working. She's got a job. She's earned money. How terrible. What terrible life she has. Absolutely like terrible. Oh, and the one, she has one guy who's an ass to her in the office, which doesn't even really matter because you can just kick him out of the office. Wow. What a terrible life she has. At least that's what the show, you know, shows. I can only go off what the show shows, okay? Oh, and then there's one scene, three guys try and hit on her. Wow. The end of the world. And they, they, they don't do anything malicious. At least you don't see them. Maybe they would have done something malicious. Maybe that's what's implied. But what the show is, is like, that's really the worst she has. She complains about her life as this, I just want a normal life. I don't want to be a superhero. I have a career. You do have a career. You're also now a superhero. I mean, they could have written a better origin story for her. Like, she has like, I don't know, she has to give blood or something. Or, I don't know, anything, to be honest. I actually, honestly, that, like, the explanation they give, or the explanation, like, the event they give for how she becomes She-Hulk feels, <laughs> it feels so abrupt like oh well he acts his blood accidentally drips onto her and she becomes she hulk just like that why wouldn't you do it as if i don't know she he acts he has to give her blood or something like that's the only way she can live or 
I don't know. Like, I feel like there's a lot of other different ways you could have done it, apart from the one I just mentioned. You could have also done uh, blood transfusion, accidentally become She-Hulk. I already said that. Uh, something where it's she becomes it by accident still, but it's not like that kind of, well, blood drips onto her from a car wreck, Bruce Banner, you know? But again, I digress. I'm, I'm bereft of ideas, to be honest. I'm actually curious to see how it happened in the comics. Let's she Hulk in the comics. We can always just look this up. How does she become a She Hulk? So. Wow, that's. There you go. 1979? What. What was a. Ba ba ba. Uh, since no other blood, do- no other donors of her blood type were available, Banner provided his own blood. See, see well, that why don't they just use the comic book origin? And I'm, it doesn't like fall out of place in this universe either. I mean, that works perfectly fine. So, I mean, I don't know what the MCU writers are doing. So, yeah. Anyway, that, that's how I think they could have done it, but what do I know? But regardless, so, so another couple of things I thought I'd mention is, yes, it is written by a 38-year-old woman, which is fine. Uh, she actually has a bit of talent behind her. She's written, uh, what has she written? Rick and Morty? Uh, what else has she So it's one episode, but still... You know, she's also written some Back at the Barnyard, which, remember Back in the Barnyard? Good stuff, that. Not not much else, though. Uh, Take My Wife, which I have not watched. Uh, Corporate, which I haven't watched. So she specializes mostly in, in comedy. I mean, any of these any good? This is 87%. That That's not bad. I mean, Easter Sunday, nope. What about Corporate? Wait, no, no. Take my wife. Surely this is not too bad. Uh, nothing. There's no uh, Rotten tomato score, so I don't know. But yeah, so she has written some things. It is directed by... So it is directed by females. So it's written and directed by females. So I don't know what... Uh, this lady is done. It's not a lot in film. Marry Me, which is an okay show, I guess. Romantic comedy, romantic drama. So she specializes in romantic comedies and dramas. So not a lot of action experience. I mean, that kind of shows. There's one action, there's two action scenes in the first episode. One is okay. The second one is just... Well, just a series of, a a flurry of cuts is the best way I could describe it. There's a bunch of jump cuts. That's it. But, directing action isn't always easy. So, yeah, written by Jessica Go, And then some of these other episodes are written by other, other people. So you got, she writes the last one. I don't know who these guys are. Uh, These, I think this lady, she's a correspondent for Entertainment Weekly, which I reckon that episode's going to be the best episode because, you know, Entertainment Weekly, you know, this one that specializes in drama, you know, celebrity gossip. Great. I can't wait. Well, I don't know. I don't have a lot of faith in She-Hulk. If you can't tell... I mean, from the title of this video, I called it a subvertive masterpiece because it subverted my expectations of what the MCU could be. And that it could be a lot worse than it currently is. It's just, it's just sad seeing how the MCU has fallen. I, I'm just sad. I have, I'm not happy. I'm not depressed. I'm just sad. You know, I used to, I used to really like this, this franchise. You know, if this is the direction they're going on, that's great. I'm jumping off. I'm going to take take an exit stop. I mean, I already haven't watched Miss Marvel. 
supposedly it's better than some of the other TV shows. I, I liked Loki, sort of, so I might watch Loki Season 2. But Falcon the Winter Soldier was in-your-face rubbish. Nonsense. Uh, oh, that's another thing. What if, Whatever happened to the ramifications of the snap? You know, you all these people coming back. Would, why wouldn't they explore some of that in this show? You know, it's a law show. What were the legal ramifications? You know, some people coming back. I don't know. I feel like my MCU is just kind of meandered. It's like they wanted to move past the Infinity Saga and move on. But they're not moving on anywhere. They're kind of just moving into political territory. Like real world political territory. The shows feel more political than anything now. And I mean political, not like internal politics within the shows, but real world politics, which I mean, again, if that's the direction they want to go in, I don't know, maybe it's for someone, but it's not for me. So what do I, do I recommend She-Hulk? If you're a middle-aged, middle-aged woman, you may get some enjoyment out of this. Okay. For most other people, you probably won't enjoy this. Okay. It's not that funny. Again, humor is subjective. Maybe you'll enjoy it. Give it a, give it a watch. And then uh, you watch one episode, you either like it or don't like it. You don't have to watch the other eight episodes. You can just, you know, switch off. And that's the thing. Give it a crack. If you don't like it, don't wa keep watching it. For me, I'm going to keep watching it because I'm just curious to see where this train wreck goes. And because I can make more YouTube videos out of it. So everyone's a winner. You know, if it gets better, maybe I'll make a video saying... It really, it subverted my expectations Uno flip style. So it flipped it back on me. But otherwise, thank you for watching this short video. I mean, She-Hulk is... I, I really do miss the good old days, to be honest. I miss the good old days. I remember, I miss the Infinity War hype. That Those days are gone, I think. The good old days. And I'm just, I'm part of the relevant group that actually liked MCU before it went down this direction. So thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.